Hey, I'm Emily. I'm Kate. I'm Lydia. And I'm Maddie. And, and this, this is Following Leyline. A podcast. An invitation to explore the world through music. This is episode three. We're going to be going into To the Sky, a song that we wrote in the van on our journey through Brazil. We're going to let you know how the song was made, the stories behind it, and the adventures that we had along the way. So we are coming to you from quarantine in Austin, Texas. We're actually trying out something new. We're all in our own respective houses. So we're in our bedrooms and our homes and our closets and we're figuring out other ways to connect in this kind of crazy time right now where we can't get together and make music but we can still communicate thanks to technology. So going back to the start of 2017, we had this dream to go back to Brazil altogether as a quartet. Kate and I's music had been really inspired by a lot of folklore rhythms and just a lot of stories that we had together while we traveled in 2014 and 2012. And we couldn't wait to get back. So as a collective, we decided we would try and figure out how to make that dream come true. And... Uh, going back to South by Southwest, that happens in March of 2017, we met a guy named Daniel. He really wanted to help us raise money to go to Brazil, and he saw a lot of potential in us. So he gifted us a couple Sony cameras, and he encouraged us to do an Indiegogo campaign and raise money. Yeah, I think, I think the encouragement to dream big was super pivotal in our moment as a band to figure out that we also are really interested in expressing ourselves in so many different ways. You know, not just music, but with writing and video and teaching and um, storytelling. And I, so I think this new way to think about how we can tell our stories of how, not only how we came together, like this podcast, but also how we can continue to document and tell the stories of the people that we meet along the way and the people who are so integral in our stories, not only as a band, but personally. And so we had this dream. We were like, let's travel Brazil and create a visual album to accompany the music that we write on this journey. So he helped us start an Indiegogo and we would reach out to all our friends and family and fans to try and raise some money to make this dream a reality. But we had a huge goal of like $30,000. I think we ended up with somewhere around $6,000 or $6,500. And that amount would cover pretty much just the cost of a van. And the crazy thing about the van is that it really came through at the very, very last second. It was about one week before we were all going to be in Brazil. So when we planned this tour for Brazil and we had these cameras, we reached out to a friend uh, that had shot some footage of Emily and I for this music video, The Wolf, and let him know that we were going to be coming back and if he would like to collaborate with, with us because we thought, okay, we would love it if somebody's there to document our journey and um, and help with this creative vision. So we built a team um, with Rafael and Luis, and they came with us for the first part of the trip. And Rafael agreed to purchase this van, maintain it, in order to travel some 3,500 miles from the very south part of Brazil, Porto Alegre, um, all the way up to Olinda, Pernambuco, which is quite a feat. And so um, once the van came through, it was just like, all right, here we go. So 
So we could get into a lot of stories about every stop on the trip of Brazil, and we will, but let's get into To the Sky and what this song is about, how it came to be. It's interesting to think about this song, To the Sky, and how like that is the song of that time in Brazil. When we first went down south, down to to do the beginning of the tour, Rafael drove the whole thing, like 30 hours straight. We experienced like two whole days while sitting in the van, like just getting out to eat and go to the bathroom, but he was just going, going, going. And I wrote in my notebook, as we break from the city like clouds, break as we descend to the ground, everything the pavement holds, everything we leave on the road. And it's funny to think that I I wrote that like way before the song even existed. As we began this movement, that's what came to me. As we break from the city like clouds, break as we descend to the ground, everything the pavement holds. Everything we leave on the road. What do you guys remember about the van? That we faced each other. I don't think we've ever had a vehicle where we were just always like looking at each other. Oh my goodness. (laughs) The van. There was a sweetness to it. It felt like our living room. It was like a tiny little space where we organized like a little central table slash ottoman where we could stretch our legs out and um and we were all four looking at each other and the folding base like fit perfectly between the driver's seat and the bench that faced the back of the car and um and yeah i remember it being like our cozy little abode sometimes we would just sprawl out like all of us sleeping i think we had our suitcase with my cajon in it in the middle as if it were a coffee table. Something that comes up when I think about it is like confronting. You have all of your stuff with you. You can't like, it was so difficult to tune out of of the situation. So when the situation was bad, it was just like you were in the middle of it all the time. And then I just remember like these fluxes of like total joy, like all of us just like, laughing and having so much fun in the back and I also remember like crying into my pillow and be like I wish I was alone (laughs) so so there's like a lot but well I think of my piece which I say uh vibração do caminho which is the vibration of the road vibração do caminho informa meu corpo informs my body And like anybody or any band that spends a lot of time on the road, you know that there's this kind of hum and drone that guides your way and you can kind of put put in your headphones and block it out. Or I took an opportunity to really listen to it and feel it and get used to it because I knew that we would be listening to it for a long time. Um, And let that be kind of the sound of the journey, the sound of this kind of discovery of not only the stories that we were coming across, but our own story. Um, and we were just sitting in the van, and and I had this kind of more rhythmic part of do poder da estrada atrás ela que ele sopro entrando na janela eu lembro tudo. And so I had this whole Portuguese poem, and Maddie was actually kind of like jamming on the ukulele just doing something a little simp- simple and rhythmic. And I started to kind of read this poetry that I had written over it, and it lined up really perfectly. And that was kind of the beginning, was just this like little seed of a song um, from just hanging out in the van together. Je me suis Yeah, I remember so clearly after that really long haul down as we started to head back up and then the van broke down. It feels like that is where To the Sky was born, kind of from that uncertainty and that tension of kind of the humming engine that's like sort of rumbling below you and that that kind of presence, it's like omnipresent can drive you towards trust and remembering the wisdom that's moving through you and moving you forward and all of those around you. And 
that kind of feels like the heart of To the Sky. So when we made it back to Sao Paulo, we had to reconvene and decide what we would do with the van. And that was a whole process in itself. And we decided to set out again in the van and continue heading north. And as we did that, we would go through Belo Horizonte, which is a city that I studied abroad in, in 2014, and where my great friend Leandro comes into the picture. Yeah, he's a luthier. He's an incredible musician. And um, I was really excited for all of us to spend some time with him and just kind of soak in a little bit of his creativity and perspective on on some of the music that we were making. And, um, and so we were really lucky to sit down with him and he kind of helped us arrange and redesign the song and add some complexities to it and add some guitar chords that were a little more jazzy and yeah, rethinking the vocals and the different parts. I remember he taught me how to play a samba rhythm on the cajon, which was really hard. But what we did decide on for this song was this really cool chord progression and then a little drum break where it goes into this traditional maraca two rhythm and then it goes back into the song So I didn't really write any lyrics to this song, but I really connect to the lyrics at the end that say, which means I look to the sky and I remember my past. Olha pro seu, lembra do seu passado. You look to the sky and remember your past. And yeah, when I sing those lyrics, I feel okay when confronting the intensity of life because I just remember how small I am and how short this precious life is and also it just speaks to everything that is living through us and our ancestry and our past that's moving us forward and really when I sing those words I just feel so held when I can look up to the sky and feel more trust in this experience that we call life. That really reminds me of the lyrics in French that I added to the song and the inspiration behind it was the tradition of drinking tea in Senegal. It's called Ataya and it's this long process where you make three different rounds of tea and each cup has its own name and there's a little proverb the first cup is bitter like life the second cup is sweet like love and the third cup is soft like death i guess the french part is about how from where we are right now we can remember everything that came before us and everything that is yet to come because we're all experiencing the beauty of being born and death and losing someone and just like these human experiences that bring us all together. Je me souviens la simplicité d'amour le pulse de peau qui respire encore so that poem talks about remembering being in your mother's womb and feeling the pulse of her blood moving through you. And then the subtle sweetness of death and how they're all kind of encapsulated in the same human experience. Je me souviens la goût de la vie et la finesse sucrée de la mortalité. Maddie, tell us about, you know, I know that you said that you wrote the 
that first beginning part of the poem that's the intro to the song when we were leaving Sao Paulo but how did you come up with the rest of the lyrics there was a little bit of time when you Kate were with your family in Uberlandia and Emily and Lydia and I were in Alto Paraíso and I think that there was some kind of situation with the van and, and just us needing space from all of that. So we're like, okay, no van, like everyone's doing their own thing for this week. So we ended up kind of like hitchhiking and I, I don't know, maybe we'd gone on a hike or something, but for some reason we ended up on the side of the highway trying to get back to town. All of us like hiding from the sun, hoping to get someone to pick us up. And I think that the song had kind of begun to unfold and I was trying to think of like, ooh, what's some lyrics that I could incorporate into this song? And I came up with that other section at that time. I remember all that it takes to build from dust. How many times a day do we wake back up? It reminded me of the lines that I'd made up like months before and it just in my head connected really nicely. I don't know, getting hit by like the dust of passing vehicles and, and just feeling so in my body and so present and kind of just, yeah, waking up into that present moment. So back to the van, we kind of mentioned that uh, there was a lot of ups and downs and we started with the van and we ended without it. And that was kind of the life cycle of the van. And does anyone want to go into that? I think the life cycle of the van also kind of mirrors the life cycle of some of our partnerships that we decided to dissolve. We had begun the journey with our friends, Rafael and Luis, and through these complex relationships involving finances, involving responsibility, involving creating a team, we recognized that in that moment was the best choice to kind of simplify and strip things down and be like, okay, we actually do feel confident to navigate this on our own. We feel like we can um, travel in a more efficient way financially and emotionally and so it was a very difficult decision to decide to split off and finish the rest of the tour by ourselves and that meant leaving the van behind. I guess it was kind of the last like month of time when we decided to split up the decision to leave the van was, it was kind of this exciting moment of like, we have an idea of what would happen if we kept the van and we kept these tensions and all the challenges that have been coming up consistently. But if we don't have it, we don't know what that future looks like. And, and there was something like really exciting about it. And it allowed so many new things to happen because suddenly we, we had to meet new people to help us get around and find new places to stay. And, And in the end, the van became a gift to Rafael. And he was about to have a baby, and it was something that we could give him that, could, that would be of use to him, and it was no longer of use to us. We wanted to go farther than the van could take us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can dive deeper into the songs and get an exclusive premiere of our visual album dropping May 14th. In the next episode, we'll be talking about The Well, the first song that we wrote when we all came home from Brazil. And remember, we're always just a message away on Instagram at Leyline Sound.